So the other story comes from a man named Morty. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> um, shout out. Uh, Morty lives around the eastern Sierra Nevadas, which sounds like Reno to me. Mm. But we were all there. Uh, how long ago? Eight months ago or so? It was in July. July was, 20th. Okay. When we went to Tahoe? Yeah. We went to Lake Tahoe. Remember how Sean drove 12 hours to hang out for 12 hours? Yeah. You said I wouldn't, bro. <laughs> and then he drove back 12 hours. That's how we get Sean. We say, you won't, and he, he does it. He, in fact, does. Yeah. No, it was a great time. We spent three days there out on the lake uh, soaking up the sun on the, this beautiful dock, just jumping off the dock into the water, just hanging out with all our friends, campfires at night, and hiking and swimming during the day. But it's a heavily forested area, and Morty frequents there frequents these mountains from spring until late fall and he takes his trail dogs with him the whole time in the story he talks about his trail dogs and how they're so experienced and at the end he talks about or he he says that his dogs are dashins dachshunds <laughs> is it dachshunds yeah da- i thought it was dash hoods anyway they're the hot dog dogs it's <laughs> oh, wiener dogs oh <laughs> yeah the wiener dogs <laughs> That is um, so upsetting. It, well, I was looking a little more into it, and apparently they were originally, and still are, in some cases, bred to hunt what? like small, like, like rodents, mice? badgers. What? Yeah. Badgers would F this these dogs. No, up. no. These go into the burrows and bring badgers out dead. Uh, oh, well, damn. Well, and, damn. I'll believe it when I see it. That's yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> Because every everyone that I've seen in real life is just a house dog, you know, <laughs> not a Kinda killer. Waddles a little bit. Yeah, because badgers don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, he has two of them, and they go with him up into the mountains every time he goes up. But he remembers one specific time he got a tip for a trail that he's never been on, and it had good reviews from whoever referred it to him, and. The first part of this hike is really steep. So all the times he's been to the Sierra Nevadas, he's never been to this specific hike. So he's excited. He's going through. And as he's maybe about an hour in, he's completely covered by the forest. And he can't see maybe 30 yards ahead or behind or around him. And as he's walking further... It starts to get a little clear, and he can see something through the trees. And it reminds me of you, Charles, Mm. um, about a month ago on your walk with MJ. And he can see like a structure, and he's slowly moving towards it. And he can see that it's a teepee, but without like the cloth around it. It's just the the skeleton of it. So he, he approaches his teepee. And as he gets closer, he says that his dogs, who are typically running ahead of him, and he's constantly calling on them to to stop or to wait, they are now glued to his, his hip. And they're not running around. They're not happy. They're kind of quiet. He thinks it's weird. And as he's getting closer, you can see there's nothing there. And he actually has pictures that he sent of this teepee. There's nothing, just looking at it, there's nothing abnormal about it. But one of the worst parts, he says, is as I got closer to this tree, all sounds of the forest stopped. I couldn't hear any birds. I couldn't hear the air. I couldn't hear the wind. I couldn't hear any other animals that previously were present with me. It was just the sound of my footsteps and the sound of my dogs. So he gets there. He takes a few pictures. Uh, he feels there's a kind of like a thick, like the air is thick. But he decides to kind of just press on and leave this behind. And not even 50 yards after this teepee, he says the weight of the air was so heavy that he couldn't move forward anymore. And this experienced hiker with his experienced dogs 
decided to stop his hike right there and turn around. Going up to the teepee, he had a walking stick. And it was some a walking stick that he made himself out of aspen. And aspen isn't a type of tree or isn't a tree that's native to that area. It's all kind of evergreen trees there. So he remembers right when he turns around that he left his walking stick back at the teepee when he took out his phone to take pictures. So he's already feeling very uncomfortable from whatever it is. And he says, oh, I'm going back anyway. I'll pick up my stick and we'll continue to to head back. And when he gets to the teepee where he was taking pictures and where he previously left his stick, he can't find anywhere. And Aspen, it's a, it's a white, the wood or the color of the wood is white. And amongst these evergreen trees that are brown and green, he can't find his walking stick anywhere. So the minute or so that he was away from his TP, he somehow lost it or something else might have found it. But that day he never saw anything. It was just the, the feeling of the air, I don't know, the atmosphere there. Um, it's either like a bad presence or he has a some serious undiagnosed asthma. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that like what causes the air to just be heavy? Like to the atmosphere to be heavy around where you're at. Yeah. Did he have the pictures? Did he send you them? Yeah, you want to see them? <laughs> yes. Like I said, there. Looking at the pictures, there's not much, really. It's just the teepee, and there's nothing else. So there's nothing like inherently creepy about it. Like, at least for me, looking at it. It looks more creepy to me. Really? That those are just all, like, standing up there in the middle, of, like, but for no reason. There's no, like, canvas covering it. It doesn't look like a shelter unless it's in the process of being built, which could explain why his wood was gone. I don't know, dude. That looks more creepy to me because it looks... Like, it doesn't, like, serve a purpose. Yeah. I don't know. Hmm. Um... That's all I got. Sorry, or no, for that story. Sorry. Um, 